Hello, happy Sunday. I am so happy to be here today with you. Um, so as the title suggests, I will be joined by Ariela today. Um, Ariela is a Taekwondo athlete and here she is. I will right here invite her or I think you can. Hello. So let me see. Yes, I see your invitation. Awesome. Let me do that. Hello. Oh, there you go. There we are. How are hey, you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad this worked. Last time I think I had some problems with my Wi-Fi. I'm so glad it's working this time. Yeah, I was like, it froze for a moment. It was like, oh, maybe something's happening. But I'm happy it's working now. So let's not. All right, sweet. Yay. So happy to have you. How have you been? Thank you for having me. I'm good. I just got back to the States a week mm -hmm. and a half ago, and this time change is still kicking my ass thoroughly. Yeah. <laughs> Are you still <laughs> jet lagged from your trip? <laughs> Very. I don't know oh, anyone that has, that has such a hard time adjusting to time changes as I do. By the oh, time really? I uh, got used to the time in England, it was just mm -hmm. about time for me to come back anyway. So Crazy. I'm slowly <laughs> catching up. It's it's a slow process, but I'm getting there. All right, you're getting there. That's good. Well, uh, happy you're here and you're taking the time to do this. Uh, well, this call, this live with me today. I am really excited to hear about your own pers uh, perspective on mental preparation, mindset. But also, I want you to share your own story, the yeah, like, yeah. point of view about all that stuff. So that's going to be so interesting. I'm so excited. Be, yeah. So the people that are here, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, yeah, feel free to just comment. If you have questions, just leave it down below. We'll be happy to answer you back throughout the call, well, throughout the live. That will be really amazing. And yeah, so let's start by, obviously, just talk to us a bit more about who you are. And yes, whatever you want to share about that. So mm -hmm. I'm Ariella Figueroa. I have been doing ITF Taekwondo. I'm bad at math for, I think, 21 years now. Yes. yes. I'm a, a four-time national champion. I am a world champion, trying to get that, you know, title back like everyone else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, this is my passion. It's what I love to do. I love martial arts, specifically ITF Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. I've never done any other art. So I'm a purist, you could say. Beautiful. And what do you do now as, I would say, training-wise, how does that look like your day-to-day -day with Taekwondo? Well, when I'm not this uh, thoroughly jet-lagged, yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I train for consistently at least five days a week. Okay. I try and take two rest days, but even one of my rest days is more like, you know, I'm doing stretching or I'm doing mobility. So I like to call it an active kind of rest day. Uh, mm -hmm. Since the pandemic has started and yeah. access to traditional dojongs and schools or studios have closed mm -hmm. or uh, they're much more limited in capacity, yeah. I've been really adjusting to more strength and conditioning training which I have never done before up until last summer. And mm -hmm. it has been a night and day difference for how it has completely complemented my martial art training. Mm -hmm. For things that I used to find difficult that I would think yeah. like, oh, I'm just not flexible, flexible enough or I'm just not trying hard enough. It was really because I didn't have the muscle capacity in mm -hmm. order to do so. And now yeah. I'm pulling things out of my, you know, my back pocket that I never thought I could do that I'm like, oh my God, that looks pretty good actually. Yeah. So I'm surprising myself these days with my own training. That's amazing. Cause that feels so good when you have this little thing that we taught. And again, I, I like what you said, like you believe before that it was just like a matter of, you know, training more and more technical. Yeah. So you would get it at some point, but just adding this part of like the physical, like exercises and that will improve, like you, like you said, like your muscle and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. You now feel stronger with that added. And that brings me, cause obviously, you know, we're going to talk about mental preparation, that kind of Love stuff. Love it. Like, in your brain a little bit to know more about what you think about that. I would love to know, like mindset wise, how do you describe your mindset towards like training or, or on a day-to-day -day basis? How you Oh, I'm obsessed. obsessed. I'm absolutely <laughs> obsessed. I think to be uh, successful in anything, you have to just be a little bit fanatical about it. You have to be a little bit obsessed, but mm -hmm. that also comes with balancing at the end of the day. It's like they say in Karate Kid, balance yes. Daniel son. So you can have this ferocious need to train, but then you also have to be 
kind and patient to yourself. And I think mm -hmm. mental preparation can help you set those expectations. So every day you can walk away feeling proud of the workout that you did rather than beating yourself up over it. So it's yes. all about, you know, that mental preparation and managing expectations over a long period of time, because I don't think anyone's goal is to win the world championship or their uh, respective sport tomorrow. It's going to take mm -hmm. time. And yes. so that it's, you know, having that mental preparation and being able to st sustain it. And if you do it, um, it, it becomes really a daily habit. Yes. And daily habits uh, tend to soak over into other areas of your life. Mm -hmm. I think you are, I don't know who said it, some philosopher, you are what you do. So excellence is therefore a habit. It's not just yes. something that you can pull out occasionally. Mm -hmm. It's a habit you practice. Totally. It's a way of living, like the way you think, the way you just do the thing. That's exactly. How, yeah, it becomes the way you do think, the way you are, not just something that you check off your list. Of, like, yeah, like, I've done it today, so I'm good. This is something that you do on your day to day, not just like you mentioned, not just in training, but also whatever thing. Exactly. You do. Yeah. And you talk about balancing. I would love to know you yourself. How do you make sure that you are able to balance what you do? Feel balanced in like your day to day. Well, I think what has made me stick with uh, Taekwondo so long is that I genuinely still find it fun. Mm. I think that's the most important part about all this. And so a question I've been asking myself probably the last year and a half, maybe two years, but definitely year and a half is, am I having fun during this training? Mm. Is there something else I would rather be doing? And so yes. it really comes down to then self-examining myself. Okay, if this isn't fun. Why isn't it fun? Why am I frustrated? Why am I sad? Why am I upset? What could I do about this situation if it's within my control to make it so that I'm having a better time? So that balance comes down to really, um, yeah, understanding forgiveness at the end of the day. This is, this is over a long period of time. So it's okay to have some bad days. Mm -hmm. But if I, it's, it's also about self-examination as to why do I feel this bad? And so what can I do to then fix the situation to balance it out? Mm -hmm. So I guess the first step is really identifying the issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love what you say about like making sure that you're still having fun, so you enjoy what you're doing. As soon exactly. as you get frustrated, that's when you ask yourself, why so? What can I do exactly. to actually make it more enjoyable or even more fun? What can I share to make it like, yeah, exactly, more enjoyable? And do you have any like, for example, like tool strategy that you know when you do that, that makes it more enjoyable for you, that makes it more fun, so this way you just keep going? Uh, I think one of the mindsets that I use is I really just try and let it roll off my shoulders. Not every exactly. performance, not every technique, mm. not every rep is going to be perfect. Yeah, and so it's really about understanding that as well. And mm -hmm. so having like, hey, it may be perfect, but it may be as close to perfect as I can get. So I think also being at times, even when it hurts, brutally honest to yourself of was that totally. my best effort? Because if it really was your best, you couldn't do any more than that, mm -hmm. then that in and of itself is worthy of celebration because you tried your That's, best. You mm -hmm. didn't give 70% and call it 100. You genuinely gave 100%. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think that's another uh, key to balancing it is mm -hmm. genuinely trying your best. How can you be upset if you mm -hmm. did your best and you didn't get meet your goal, but you did your best? You couldn't ask for any more. So totally. as long as you put everything into that, I think that's mm -hmm. my biggest key to balancing it is just trying your best yes, and being happy with sense. that effort. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really a strong one, like really a strong key to be satisfied with what you do. Just exactly. That, asking yourself, how can I just give 100% right now? And just also knowing that your 100% today will not necessarily be the same tomorrow. So exactly. you be satisfied depending on, you know, life happens, less things are happening, you can have certain things on your mind and yeah. you can feel more pressure because things are going on. But if you deep down, just ask yourself before having the intention to giving your all and after that, and also being, I would say even really precise and specific about what does it look like for me when I give exactly. my hundred percent. So this way it's like a good indicator of like, okay, today I'm satisfied. I've done that. How can exactly. I be satisfied today because I've done that? Great. Let's do it. And exactly. I feel like good and not overthinking afterward. Really, really love that. It's and like a, then, it's like a white belt. When you first get that white belt and you first learn front kick, you're doing front kick up and down your hallway. You're practicing it every opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing when you have a chance to try your best, yes. try your best in every single thing that you do. Mm -hmm. That way it just becomes a habit. It, yes. You're building on that excellence. 
totally. And I see someone, I see Audrey, one of my clients, just like preach. I'm like, yes, <laughs> preach for nice. that. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it actually is. It's a habit just to think about how can I be satisfied each time. It's not something exactly. it's not that I feel like it's, it's seen as something uh, not under our control. So mm -hmm. today I might not be satisfied. Tomorrow I might be satisfied. Depends like of the outside, like, um, yeah. Yeah, like the perspective and everything. But at the end of the day, it's actually us with our own attitude. We can exactly. look for the thing that will make us satisfied, make us feel good about what we do. It's yeah. just a matter of focusing on that if we really yeah. truly want that. Mm -hmm. And I think a key to being, I certainly uh, wouldn't call myself an elite athlete, but I'm trying. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the keys to yeah. trying to be an elite athlete is being adaptable. Champions mm -hmm. adapt. I mean, I love doing Taekwondo yes. patterns. And so I know Chunji is always going to be Chunji. It's never going to the same. It's always going to have mm -hmm. the same movements. So I, I really like that idea of control. Yeah. So as a, pattern, as a patterns person, I mm -hmm. like being able to control my environment, control my workout yes. space, control my reps. But mm -hmm. the world isn't perfect. It's not always going to be mm -hmm. set in stone. So yeah. I think that the people that are most excellent are also most excellent at adapting. Mm -hmm. as well and still trying to stay positive while adapting because it's yes. easy to fall into a bad mood when things don't go your way if mm -hmm. the flight was canceled if the hotel lost your reservations at the on the way to germany um on the way to Inzo at the last yeah. world championship my bus completely broke down we were left on the side of the road Ooh, for like wow. three hours i didn't mm -hmm. know if i was going to make the way in in time i was freaking out and so i just realized you know what there's only so much i can control right now so I'm going to excuse myself into, you know, the side of the road that no one's on. And I'm going to go practice my patterns because yes. you take every opportunity to practice. Exactly. You take every opportunity to change that mindset mm -hmm. around. If I, if I can't control this, I can control my training. So let's start training. Mm, I love it. You can always make the best out of everything that's just in front of you. Like, you know, that's exactly. obviously opportunity, depending how you want to see it. If you're looking to control everything around you, at some point you'll be disappointed. Because exactly. You can. <laughs> yeah. It's going to always be a proven evidence that you can and that going to make you stress. But if you're adaptive, like you can actually have not really control. The only thing you can actually um, be feeling good about is the fact that everything is changing. So knowing exactly. that it's the fact everything changes, everything can like move. You know that if you're able to adapt, you're going to be good. You're going to be exactly flowy. everything goes, uh, happens to you in a flowy way. So that yeah. makes a lot of sense. It's all about getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. Exactly. And do you have another, I would say, I would love to know other example of that, of moments, either when you train or me, be like a memory you have in mind of a moment you had to adapt and you thought about it and you got conscious about the fact that, okay, right now I have to let go and just like adapt to this situation. And Oh, every time I've had a draw on a pattern or I'm putting out my best effort and the judges still come to a decision of between me and the other woman next to me. And so it's just about adapting. I can't hang on to the fact of what could I, you know, what are they not seeing? How is she mm -hmm. doing better than me? What kind of, you know, make the judges look at me more. It's just, yeah. look, I can control my pattern right okay. now in this moment. So I would think, yeah, every time that I've gotten a draw where we've had to go three or four, or even five patterns to make a decision. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, you can undo anything about that uh, beside your own attitude and exactly. how you're going to deliver, like how you're going to show up. And, it's, well, and during that time, you have to keep such a straight face because you're still on the competition floor. I mm -hmm. can't go to my coach and be like, what do I do? I can't get a bottle. I can't get a bottle of water. I can't wipe the sweat off my head. It's mm -hmm. just I'm in the moment right there. So it's all about, you know, composure. Exactly. And I have a question. I would love to know how do you deal with like, you know, your own mind. So obviously I'm pretty sure you faced that stress, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, feeling overwhelmed. What are your either strategies or how do you deal with that? Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> Usually my answer is to train. I mean, I, you, I really do use, um, <laughs> Taekwondo patterns as like a form of meditation. When I do them, right. I feel myself getting completely lost in them mm. to where nothing else, not, not even necessarily matters, exists. What only exists right there is that technique, is that pattern, is that timing. And yes. so uh, even when things get mentally overwhelming, I'll even just start going through patterns in my head, like through osmosis, mm -hmm. where I can still feel the muscle reactions in my arm. They're firing yes. off, even though I'm just sitting here. Mm -hmm. And so I think... Um, I think it was this documentary. I think it's called, I'm going to get it wrong. Sorry, guys. It's called um, <laughs> The Dawn Wall, I think okay. it's called, where it's about this professional rock climber who mm. scaled, um, I think it was Yosemite, which is mm -hmm. one of the highest peaks in the United States, 
with no gear at all, just his hands and feet. Mm, I think you've and, heard about him. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, he, yeah. Used, he used visualization where he had climbed the same route mm -hmm. so many times. He knew yes. where every crack in the rocks were. He knew every uh, grade of slant. Mm. So he had just memorized that route so many times so yeah. that he had become so comfortable in the uncomfortable. Mm. And so especially when it comes down to, let's say I'm having trouble landing a jump or I'm just not nailing my kicks today, then I'll, we're, I'll tell myself it's okay to train smarter rather than harder. So rather mm. than beating myself up the next yeah. two hours, three hours until I land it, yes. it's okay just go through it through osmosis of telling my body, okay, I'm going to bring my hands to center at my, the point that my knee is up at my, my hip level. I'm going to rechamber and I'm going to extend my side kick. So I'm pushing my heel out towards my chest. I'm bringing my hands to my chest and out when the direction of the punch symmetrical with my kick. So it's, I'm going through yes. what I should be doing even on my drive home. So it's all mm -hmm. really about visualization. So even mm -hmm. if I can't nail it in the moment, it's okay. Cause I know in my head, I'm doing my best and that's yes. all I can ask for. Totally. And what I hear also uh, from that is the fact that you go back into your body as much as yes. possible. Because obviously when with ourselves, we have this anxious thought, it talks, you know, it's our yeah. mind like going crazy and like overreacting to what's going on, overthinking what we've yeah. done before, all that kind of stuff, what can happen. Exactly. But then the fact that you take the time to either visualize in your head your pattern or thinking about it, and connecting with it like in, like your muscle with how it's supposed yeah. to feel you just go back in your body kind of shut the thoughts even though there's a little exactly your mind i'm guessing it's still like uh working but then your attention is not on your thoughts it's more exactly your body what you actually can do and whenever we come back there and i, I love the fact that you said that because it's really a pretty good way to bring ourselves back to the present moment exactly Just thinking about that and when we visualize we don't really think about that we were actually in the present moment doing something like visualize visualize oof. visualize you got it thank you yeah <laughs> doing that <laughs> and actually being in our body and feeling what's happening in the now and mm -hmm. controlling every little thing so this way the brain just knows that when we feel a certain way it means that exactly it's good. exactly that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I like to tell myself is I don't think anyone gets as nervous. I mean, I'm sure they do, but they don't get as nervous as I do before a competition. Oh, yeah. I just, my, I, and my knees start to shake. I feel like I'm going to faint. It's the worst. And so as, as, like, as much as I have to tell myself I'm my biggest fan, I also am my own worst enemy. And so the mental preparation is yeah. key because it's like a routine that you're telling yourself before you yeah. get onto the mat. So like I know some competitors that have a particular kind of warm up that they're doing for breaking or for mm -hmm. sparring or for patterns that isn't necessarily the same with all three because you have to prepare your body in a different way for all three um, disciplines within Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. But I know when I'm going up onto the mat, I'm telling myself like, I've done these patterns, no matter which pattern it is. I know all of them. Yes. I've done it a million times. And mm -hmm. then I also think to myself, like, what's the worst that's going to happen? Okay, I lose. Mm -hmm. do, do I still have family and friends that love me? Absolutely. Am Am I still happy and healthy? Mm -hmm. You know what I, it's, you know what I mean? Like, yes. do I still get yes. to go and help and support my team? So it's really, you also have to manage expectations of like, what's going to happen if I lose? Mm -hmm. it's not it yes it's disappointing of course it is yeah, course. it's sad it's disappointing you're heartbroken but it's truly mm -hmm. not the end of the world and so I think yeah. looking at the brighter side of things mm -hmm. I'm Makes like sense. all right yeah. now it's you know my my time is over now I can enjoy my vacation here in Europe because most of the time That's the true. competitions are yeah. in Europe <laughs> through that mm. it, uh, yeah totally like that and that is all of being at peace with the result like no matter mm -hmm. what so when you know you're able to look into what can happen like it is okay to have these thoughts and think about that like knowing that there's a chance that i lose and there's a chance that i'm disappointed there's a chance that i you know exactly afterward like that means that you care totally the truth yeah, yeah exactly we're not trying to avoid that like not at all like knowing exactly that it's there it's like just something else like we take the whole experience not just exactly like, just wanting to win if it doesn't happen then it's the end of the world like you just said. exactly it's beautiful to hear that you know, your focus is mainly on, okay, the evidence that thing can go right, not just exactly. wrong. Like, it is a possibility, but there's also a chance that no matter what, I still have a family, support people exactly. around me. I'm still going to enjoy my time. It's going to have the best 
time of my life right now yeah. no matter what so bring yourself back to that actually and hence i feel the chance for you to have a great experience exactly satisfied and mm -hmm. if you go into the ring feeling good odds are you're gonna have a good performance if you go into the ring feeling bad about yourself good mm -hmm. luck it's gonna be a lot yeah. harder for you totally and i think even like when you're at peace with the negative thoughts you know these yeah. are like telling you that it might go wrong when you're at peace with that when you welcome them be like all right you're there hi like yeah. i remember i can be disappointed i remember i can lose but then when you're at peace with that then you can just focus on the thing that will make you feel better and be like exactly. right, right now how do i want to feel knowing that no matter what no matter is no matter the result i can just yeah. do what i want to do and, and just I, enjoy yeah i think so many people um lose sight of at the end of the day you should be having fun doing this yes <laughs> and so i mean i think a lot of people especially if you've been doing martial arts for so many years you're going to lose eventually it's gonna oh, yes. hurt mm -hmm. and so just like any physical injury it can be a big emotional injury mm -hmm. it can be oh, to yeah. you know some people can call it traumatic absolutely and exactly. so if you were to break a bone mm -hmm. haha if you're going to break a bone, <laughs> yeah. the first thing you do is go to the doctors, you get x-rays, you get it taken care of. Mm -hmm. But so many people don't take care of this emotional wound inside themselves when they so lose. True. So mm -hmm. they go to the next competition, but really the strength of that bone is compromised because it never, you never got, gave it a chance heal. to heal in the first mm -hmm. place. And so I think mental preparation is just as crucial as the physical training. So mm -hmm. that way you can prepare to heal if things don't go the, you know, the way you'd hope them to anyway. Yeah, totally. Every UFC fighter, I mean, they have to get a clearance from a medical doctor to be able to fight. After every fight, they have to get a medical clearance. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like you have to give your medical clearance to yourself of did you give yourself the appropriate time and resources to heal on the inside? Did you give yourself you know, the seven stages of grief of denial, anger, uh, bargaining, all mm -hmm. the data, whatever that is. True, you have to true, go yeah. through that and everyone has their own time and you have to understand it's normal to go through those emotions. Mm -hmm. And if you try and hide from those feelings, that's where yeah. the real damage is going to be done. Julie, I love the analogy with the bone and like <laughs> when we get an Thank injury, you. I really love that. And that is so true because, you know, at the end of the day, what we're most afraid of for most of the time when we want, we don't want to lose or anything, we're fearing like disappointment or fearing that feeling of, pain mm -hmm. and it is just an emotion at the end of the day it's an emotion like we're afraid of feeling an emotion exactly so when we actually realize that is like we've been through so many emotions through our lives so far exactly like you've through. never been sad before you've, you've been sad before you'll be sad again it'll be okay exactly exactly it's really temporary i'm not saying it, it won't hurt obviously of course it like it's fine but yeah if you let it come in it will go you take the time to live it and then you can set it free set yourself exactly free from it and then you can keep moving and also you get something out of this pain out of this mm -hmm. experience a big lesson no matter what it is you exactly can, like get the message that comes from this pain like exactly. what happened exactly so fear of losing is really something we don't want to experience because we think it means something bigger than it actually is it's like exactly oh my God, end of the world like our mind doesn't want to go through that because it thinks it's going to be the end for us yeah but deep down, we all know that's just, just an emotion we're trying to avoid and exactly. we have the courage to just be like you know what i add the strength through they have no uh every emotions well, yeah imagine what's possible after that it is truly exactly amazing. And so yeah. if you've had a good time up through that training experience and you've tried your best during every single practice, rehearsal, performance mm. leading up to that point, if you genuinely gave 100% effort, how can you be upset when you truly did your best? No one can mm -hmm. ask you for any more than your best effort. So if you exactly. gave your best effort, that's worth celebrating in and of itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Totally, I agree. And let me just, I saw a comment. Let me just read it right now. Uh from Trans Taekwondo, yes. I always tell my students the fact that you are nervous just means you care. It's a great way to reprogram their perspective, uh, perspective of fear of losing. Totally, I love that. Thank you for sharing this. I have this, I say the same thing about stress, uh, anxiousness. When we are anxious and when we feel stress, it's actually a sign that we are either excited or about to do something that, um, that we need energy for. So when I feel stress, it's like energy running through my body and this energy yeah. will be actually really necessary for me to provide a good performance because I know the more energy they have, the better that I can exactly when I perform. So Something I, would I be wrong if you didn't stress. care. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love this perspective. Like everything is just 
you know, like when we talk about stress, when we talk about um, even feeling scared of something, we can always switch the story for something. Yeah, it could mean something different. We've learned to see it a certain way, but at the end of the day, it's it is what it whatever we want it to mean. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like you know, I I get it. I totally understand the pre-tournament nerves, the, oh, the yeah. competition <laughs> butterflies completely. Mm -hmm. But it's telling yourself like, that's because you're, you want to be there. It's because you care. It's because you've tried your best exactly. up to this point. And of mm -hmm. course you want, you know, the big win. Everybody does. And the person mm -hmm. standing across from you, that may not seem it. They're just as nervous. So mm -hmm. I think that helps to know also that everyone here is nervous. Yes. The ones who mm -hmm. aren't nervous, they're the ones who don't care. And so exactly. everyone's human, everyone get, you know, so it's, it's normal to feel those emotions, mm -hmm. but then it's yeah. about, like you say, reframing it into, mm -hmm, exactly. I want to be here, that this is a good mm -hmm. thing. This is my body's yes. natural response. It's mm -hmm. that, you know, that fight or flight. It's your two mm -hmm. instincts, fight, flight, or freeze. Exactly. And so it's, it's you against your toughest enemy, which is at the end of the day yourself. And so you're having mm -hmm. to deal with those, you know, three feelings. Do I run? Mm -hmm. Do I stay and do nothing? Or do I stay and fight? It's and a fight. tough decision yeah. to make, but I don't think anyone That's has true. ever regretted, even if they lost, I don't think they regretted like, man, I shouldn't have gone up. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the feeling you get, you get on before you get on a roller coaster, like it's terrifying, but afterwards yeah. you lived, you're okay. Yeah. Exactly. You're fine. It's exactly. normal. Like you feel that you're excited about it. It's part of us. And exactly. you know, excitement and stress is the same feeling in, within the body. So it's kind of the same thing, depending how you see it. So again, reframing, that's where exactly. you get your power back. I just telling another story. And like you just mentioned, the biggest difference between two person, like both will live stress. Like everybody's stressed. Everybody cares is stress about what's going to happen. But biggest difference between both person is mainly how do they welcome that stress? How do they mm -hmm. see that stress? Is it something helpful? Is it like your friend, like your ally? Exactly. Like to see this way? Is it something that's gonna help you? Or is it something that you see as limiting? Is it something that is gonna uh, bring you back to just like being super tense and like not feeling great? Exactly. Most of the time we are trying to avoid the stress, the pain, but if we can just see it as a friend, as something that can help us, we just utilize the whole thing. We utilize that energy that is all Exactly. There and just take it and use it for our own good. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then the more you do that, the more it becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Everything is about habit. And I think that's something we have to like focus on the most. Like it's just a matter of practicing this way yeah. of thinking because what I hear a lot and probably even you, maybe you've been thinking about this or you heard other people when we, we talk about like the bright side, people are like, mm -hmm. yeah, but you know, like it's, it's good, but, there's always the bad yeah. side also, you know, like it's hard to focus on the positive side when there's mm -hmm. the negative side still there. But again, it's a choice. It's a choice exactly. to focus on one. Mm -hmm. And it's practice, like a new technique you just learned. Like obviously you have this technique that you always do. This mm -hmm. is now a reflex. This is your favorite technique. But now you have to either change it or adapt it to make it even more effective. Exactly. Well, that would take some time. <laughs> That's for sure. But you know that there's going to be like a result coming out from that. There's going to be good, something good coming out from this yeah. new technique or this new way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Especially now with all these online competitions. I mean, everyone's yeah. having to adapt to a whole new way yes. of competing. That is so true. And quick question about that, just because you, you, you were talking about it. Like, how is your... How are you experiencing that, like this type of uh, new tournament style? Being oh, I honest? love it and I hate it at yeah. the same time. Tell me. <laughs> it's a double-edged uh, sword, definitely. Because what's nice about uh, the traditional competitions, traditional yeah. tournaments is, although we may not know what uh, patterns or tolls we'll be doing ahead of time, mm -hmm. it's lasting maybe six minutes on the floor. And yeah. then you're done. You know the result, you're done. But yeah. for me, I'm a perfectionist and mm -hmm. I don't have an instructor or a coach in the same state with me. And so I'm doing everything on my own in front of a mirror. And mm -hmm. so with the, the way the online competitions work is let's say they release the patterns at 5 a.m. on a Monday. Yeah. You have until 5 a.m. on Tuesday to perform the patterns with no mm -hmm. uh, edits, no cuts, just okay. you know the patterns and they're done. Yeah. And so I think for the finals, in October, I made it to the finals. I must have done Moon Moo and Paul Long for like six hours. Mm, Just like, no, I could have done that kick better or that stance looked off. And so 
I did it for like six hours and I knew thanks to my mental preparation that going into it, it was going to be a beast of a workout day. It was going to yes. be a tough day, mm -hmm. but I was able to walk away afterwards knowing like I gave 100%. I couldn't mm -hmm. have done any better. And so it's like, as it's, you know, getting to closer to hour five, hour six, I'm thinking to myself, and could I possibly do better than what I'm doing right now? Or all of my techniques and my patterns just kind of plateauing, like they're staying the same. They're not getting any worse. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. okay. But yes. if they're not getting any better, then this is my best effort. I can't do mm -hmm. anymore. And I had just have to accept that. And so mm -hmm. acceptance at the yes. end of the whole, you know, the stages of trauma For and sure. grief at the very yes. last one is acceptance. Acceptance. Totally. Mm, that makes sense. So awesome. yeah. I love it. I love the online competitions. I love the online tournaments because it's giving us a chance to compete like never before. Yeah. I feel like we're really on the forefront here. Like we proved that it could be done online. It, it, and it so I think, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, eventually the world's going to go back to the way it was. We're going to have traditional in-person tournaments and competitions. But I think this is also a really cool alternative, yeah. even so just for extra true. practice to get your profile out there. I think it's mm -hmm. been great. Yes. I think that is something that will probably stay, but like will be mixed with like the live performance. Like exactly. Because like obviously right now it's all about like, um, patterns and like i'm i'm guessing like um, yeah like traditional sparring traditional, like uh, yeah, yeah like exactly that can be done mm -hmm. but i think that's interesting because it has like people have more time to perform the pattern exactly they can look at it and see like what they have to improve but then exactly. after that is being brutally honest like you said earlier be real honest with you can i do this better is that my max right now because exactly obviously, you can always look back and be like no that can be done like uh another way but now yeah. adding up a lot of hours and how is yeah. your body responding to that? And then you're like, all right, how can I be exactly. satisfied with that? Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. It's being honest with yourself. It's not being cruel yeah. to yourself. Like, oh, you can do no, better. It's exactly. asking yourself, can mm -hmm. I do better? That's mm -hmm. it. Can I get my leg higher? Can I take more concentration? Am I fully focusing? It's just being honest with yourself. You're not being cruel to yourself. Mm -hmm. How can you do better if you don't know there's things that need to be fixed? Yes. And for you, how do you, because I, I, I love this part, there's a big dif difference in between this part of her mind that is more cruel, like judgy, <laughs> really like the judge of like, you should have done better, blah, blah, oh, blah. That's my, that's, that yeah. Is totally it's just what it is, you know, facts. Like, exactly. Rational. Like, how do you differentiate both and how do you deal with both, I would say? Well, it helps I'm a New Yorker. And so I try and win. <laughs> it helps that I try and be uh, pretty non-emotional in my decision-making mm. process. I always try mm. and use logic rather than emotionality. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, how do I balance that? That's a mm. tough question. Mm. Knowing that I, what I want at the end of the day is to win competitions. Yeah. I want to win. I want to get my name out there. I mm -hmm. want to feel like I have accomplished something. And the only way to do that, like I said, is through long sustained effort. And yes. so understand that there's going to be a balance of days where it's just like, I don't want to F and be here. There's mm -hmm. other things I could be doing. And so if there's yes. days where I feel there's other things I could be doing, then if my mind is not totally focused on that workout, I'm going to dip. Because mm -hmm. my mentality is go hard or go home. Go home. Yes. If you're not there to work, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do anybody any good even being their partner. So if I'm there for someone mm -hmm. else that day, if I'm their sparring mm -hmm. partner for the day, and I'm not really feeling too into it, they're not going to get any better. And so mm -hmm. it really is about, you have to care about what you're doing. You have to be passionate enough about mm -hmm. it. And to know yeah. that, you know, it's kind of like a car. And I've, you, mm -hmm. you've taught me this now <laughs> so many times, so I'm just going to yes. use it one more time, mm -hmm. where uh, if you're on a road trip, you can let the anxious person, the one who's always getting upset, drive the car the whole way, and then it's just going to be an awful time during that road trip. Mm -hmm. Or you could have the person who really doesn't care. They won't, they'll drive under the speed limit. They'll make all the stops in the world. So there has to be that balance there. So between mm -hmm. the person who, because I'm very hard on myself. I'm very judgmental of myself of, no, mm -hmm. you can do that better. Let's stay until it's perfect. But then yeah. that's where I stopped having fun. And it became, I was being more cruel to myself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so then you taught extreme. me. Yes. Exactly. And so mm -hmm. you taught me that analogy of the road trip. Whereas yes. I let myself always be so hard during those trainings on myself that I'm going to get burnt out. But if I always let this care person, carefree person take mm -hmm. over as well on that other side of the extreme, then I'm not ever going to make any progress. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about, you have to find like, okay, that was a good training session. What did I like about that training session? Who is in charge of the wheel? So it's, mm -hmm. all, it's, it helps, um, that I also keep like, uh, I don't want to call it a diary. 
but I keep like a workout journal of like, yeah. you know, my reps, what I did that day, my water intake, calories, Amazing. all of that. And mm -hmm. I also, I'll write in it, like, what did I like about that workout? What did mm -hmm. I not like about that workout? And what can I do better in the next one so I can have the result that I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. And so that's really helped me, you know, oh, like, okay, yeah, it, hel it helps me progress. It helps yes. me see my progress over time. Mm -hmm. That's and really factual. Just checking how my attitude this mm -hmm. change is completely different as well. Amazing. Yeah, because this is really factual that like you know with facts what actually happened throughout the workout and then you can work with the emotional part of like who was talking, who was, uh, what were the talk and like associated with that so you can either repeat that but at the end of the day you go back with the facts like how did I feel, I felt this way. Exactly. Yes, that's it. I wrote it and then I can apply and do it again and again. Yeah, exactly. I just have a question for you. I see uh, Trinsic Wondo is asking, what are your thoughts on fighting bigger and better opponents? I've seen many people's confidence totally drop after seeing that their opponent was a former champ or they are way bigger. Hmm. My thoughts on fighting opponents, bigger, bigger, better opponents. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll answer this in like two mm -hmm. parts. If you want to be the champ, you've got to beat everybody. Doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't mm. matter if they're a no name fresh kid on the scene or if they're a veteran of this sport. But at the end of the day, we're all nervous. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a fresh faced kid, new, new to competition, you're nervous. Whether you're a veteran who has this fresh kid first friend who's like, I don't know, this kid may knock me out. I never heard of this mm. guy before. So I really think going into it with an open mind rather than negative is yes. going to help change that framing within your mind. I think you'll see there's mm -hmm. a big difference with that. I see many people's confidence drop after seeing that their opponent was a former champ or they are way bigger. So in mm -hmm. patterns, it's different mm -hmm. because it's, it's pretty cruel. For patterns, everybody starts with a score of a perfect 10. So the only thing that's gonna happen to you in patterns is no one's gonna compliment you. They're only gonna take away points. But yes. in sparring, everybody starts with a zero. So it's all it's the points to gain. Mm -hmm. And so I think going into it, trying to go in with the idea of like, oh, I have to score. No, you just have to, that's for sparring. And I'm not much of a, I, I'm a fighter, but I prefer yeah. patterns. Mm -hmm. So going into it for the pattern mindset is I think you just have to focus on doing your, your yeah. best. If you're yes. focused on the person next to you, mm -hmm. who's worrying about you? Because the judges exactly. are there to be neutral. They're not worried about either one of you. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, if you're focusing on, oh, I have to beat that person. I have to do it just like them. I have to do this like them. I have to do their kicks, their jumps, everything like them. Then how are you going to be you? Because no mm -hmm. one does them better than they do. They're the best exactly. in the world at being mm -hmm. them. But you have to worry about being the best version of you. So what? Mm -hmm. And so if you lose, okay, you got to say you lost to a world champ and then you go up to them afterwards and you ask, you talk, mm -hmm. you ask questions. I mm -hmm. think after, even after Worlds, after every one of my events, I go up to the umpires, I go up to the judges, whether they liked or disliked my pattern. And I say, thank you for, you know, being my judge today. Thank you for your, you know, helping. Thank you for running the event today. What can I do better? Yeah. Not, not shower me with compliments. Tell me what I did great. No, I want to know what can I do better? Not what did I do wrong? What can I do better? So that way it saves exactly. my dignity at the end of the day as well. I love that. Just being able to focus back on yourself and like reframing, like being open when you go there. I really like the, this part. And also for me, I, I was thinking about that, the way that I go when I, well, obviously we're all thought about, oh, maybe this person better. We know this person, we of know course. This person can be like really good. And the way that I love seeing that now, like how I reframe that even with clients right now, the, the way that I talk about it, it's funny because I just recently talked about this in the private coaching, so it's pretty good. But we've talked about the fact that when we compete against these people, it means that we are at this level too. You know exactly. what I mean? You say it this way, you're like, you know what? I'm going against this person. It means I'm pretty freaking good. Exactly. <laughs> you know I mean? Like I have the chance to be there on that stage, if, either if, for pattern, even like sparring. Yeah. Like, I'm that good that I am there too. Like, you know, have my place here because exactly. you know, I'm against this person. So I've seen it like this. It gives me the opportunity to be like equal. Even yeah. though we always, like, it's a tendency to see the other person as even better because we're trying to look for something to understand how the person works. But then after that, when you just bring your, you know, uh, your exactly. back on yourself, you go back to what you're able to do, what you can do, and then this energy can be used, not against yeah. this person, but just to, like, show like what I'm you good enough to be here as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. And even, like, for patterns, like, if you look at the other person, again, like, your energy is on them, not on mm -hmm. you. So what are you doing? You're kind of missing, like, this part of you being exactly. involved and doing what you do best. Same thing when you spar, when you're able to see yourself mm -hmm. as, as 
good is like, hey, I have my place here. I've done this amount of work. I have my proof, my evidence. And right now, I can show up and like be on that stage and do what I do yeah. best. So that's like a truly amazing like feeling to just know that you're there at the same time as them. It means exactly. That, you know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's still an, a monumental event. I mean, to get to the ITF World Championships in our federation, you, they're only choosing the top two in the country. Mm -hmm. exactly. And so to have made it at that level, to even get selected to go to represent your nation in the biggest event our world mm -hmm. has is yes. monumental. It's mm -hmm. amazing to be there, yes. to feel that energy in the room. Mm -hmm. I really do. I enjoy my non-competition days just as much as I enjoy my competition days because it's a week long of just everyone here yes. wants to be here. Everyone here loves what they do. Mm -hmm. Even the umpires. I mean, it's a Isn't really it? thankless job. I've never mm -hmm. done it. I don't have an interest in doing it because <laughs> their job looks way too hard. I'm just going to stick with the easy job of competing. But they're giving up their time as well. And they're doing all this for free. And mm -hmm. so it really is. And I don't know many nations that have uh, government support in terms of sponsorship. I know the USA certainly doesn't. So mm -hmm. everyone there truly is giving up their time away from their lives, their family, their friends, their responsibilities. Yeah. And they're choosing to put mm -hmm. on the world's best event. That. And so to, to even be selected to go to the opening ceremonies, to compete, to watch your friends, to go to Europe, like not many mm -hmm. people get yes. these kind of opportunities. And so I mm -hmm. think being thankful is just yeah. another way to really enjoy the training mm -hmm. at the end of the day. I agree. And just, you know, being thankful and celebrating those little things. And mm -hmm. that's the thing. Most of the time we are always looking for the bigger thing to celebrate. So for example, exactly when we win, like the result, but before getting the result, it's like this whole process. And through this process, there's so much thing to celebrate, like being part of the team, like our yeah. office, like so many people wants to be on it. And I know, and you know, as well, like we've been on the team for so many years and now it's like, Oh, we're part of it. That, that exactly. That's what it is. And then we move on. Well, if we just take the time to remember that it's part of our yeah. then that we are here for a reason. Like we have this capacity to like just compete and perform. Exactly. And that before. So remembering this, like even just you participated, like I say you like the person listening right now also, but if you just participated that one tournament, you know what it is. So you have this experience. So this is something to celebrate because this is something you can use now for the next tournament. No matter exactly. whichever you're at, you pass one break. This is amazing. Something to celebrate because we're always looking to get better and that is part also to progressing and even becoming world champion. Yeah. Obviously, we don't have to put that aside, but it goes both ends, like to balance both. Like we want to get better and also being satisfied good with the things that we have already. So exactly. if we don't recognize that, it's going to be hard to know exactly what we have to get better or where we're supposed to go. Exactly. If we don't know where we're at, what our strength, what we're good at, what yeah. we are known for. So also part of that, asking other people around us, like, what are my strengths? What am I good at? Because we forget that a lot because we're trying to, I would say, fill the gap in between like where we yeah. are and where we want to be. But also realizing where we are is going to bring us even quicker to where we want to be. If that makes exactly. Sense. It does. Mm -hmm. And I think that culture uh, is set from the top. And so, you know, I, we both been on, on our respective team for a few years now, mm -hmm. where now when we were the, you know, fresh new face members on the team, now mm -hmm. we're the seasoned veterans and the new guys are looking to us. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of have to set that standard of, okay, I have mm -hmm. a pre-training routine. I have a routine before I get on the mats. I have a particular mm -hmm. stretching routine. These are the things that I tell myself. And so they're going to look to us for how they form their competitive careers. That and so if, <laughs> if we're the ones who are always freaking out, if we're the ones who have the anger issues that when we lose, we're throwing chairs, that's mm -hmm. going to set a bad example for how, you mm -hmm. know, it's a teaching moment for you and a learning opportunity for them where they're going to see that's how it's okay for people at our level to handle stress. Well, it's not, mm -hmm. one, it looks bad on you. It's a bad look. Two, it's unhealthy in here and it's not yeah. contributing to, no what, you know, yeah. those emotional wounds that we got to start healing so you can be comfortable mm -hmm. to compete. And so yeah. I think that the more senior members that are talking about um, performance anxiety, sports psychology, mental preparation, I think the more people that talk about this, the mm -hmm. stronger their teams will be, especially yes. starting from the higher ranks from the upper echelon of the teams. Totally agree. I think even this part of emotional intelligence, you're talking about mm -hmm. emotion, something how to handle, but just know what it is, what is the use of like our emotion? Because most of the time we're like, we're trying to bury these emotions. Exactly. Feel because we feel like if 
we are neutral, we're trying to be as neutral as possible, we think we're going to be better at handling fear, but what we don't understand is that these emotions are actually really beneficial if you know how to use them. Like, yeah. This anger can be, used, instead of throwing a chair, can be used to be even more exactly. performing in that so much energy to be used and utilized while you perform. Same thing with uh, just stress when we're talking about this. Like exactly. I know I excited to do something. You know, it's meaningful. So if we're able to just be in charge of our own self, lead ourselves, mm -hmm. know how to do that and know how our emotion can help us with that, that's going to make such a exactly. difference. Exactly. <laughs> like, it just, does. Like, imagine that, like, it wow. really does. It's like a superpower, being able to control your emotions. And, yeah. you know, everyone likes to say, like, oh, I'm in control of my emotions. I'm fine. I got this. Mm -hmm. It's only mm -hmm. when the pressure is really on do you see yeah. how you really handle mm -hmm. your emotions. Yes. Are you the type of person that, you know, are you going to throw a big fit in front of everyone? Are you going to cry? And that's okay because, you know, everyone deals with emotions in their own way. Are you the type to, you know, I'm fine. I'm fine. Then you, as soon as I'm alone, you know, it's bawling, <laughs> yeah. absolute, you know, tragedy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's okay. It's, you're allowed to feel emotions. That's human. Totally. And everyone has to go through it at their same, you know, their rate at their own time. Yes. But it is important to not ignore mm -hmm. or neglect any of those feelings, experience yeah. all of it, happiness, sadness, joy, Everything. anger, yeah. you have to experience all of it. That way you can learn from it. Because otherwise, you know, it's like a broken bone that's never going to heal. If you don't give it mm -hmm. the correct attention that it needs, yeah. you're not going to be as well fortified for the next mm -hmm. time something like this happens. Totally, and I think the key here is to know yourself better. So mm -hmm. this way you know exactly how you yourself process your own emotion, how you can utilize, because someone, like your friend can do it a certain way that would not be a good fit for you. Same thing when exactly. you feel, we have all our own limits because we have different bodies. Like, you know, we don't uh, processing the same, we don't heal the yeah. same necessarily. Like we have to be able to listen to our body and be more in touch with it to know exactly what we need at this moment. Yeah. Like, what do I need to hear? What do I need to do to feel better about this? Like what should exactly. I do for myself? Because we can like, have example around us and this is good because this is how we experience and we get like um, yeah. more information. But at the end of the day, after that, we have to ask ourselves like what's best for us? Exactly. <laughs> like what is the best option for me and what's going to really help me become the best because being the best is best of you not like exactly now it's like the best version of yourself and that was that's what's going to bring you yeah further i believe so yeah and i believe i'm i mean i'm really lucky that i come from a, a taekwondo school that we you know it's not win or lose it's win or learn Mm. You know, I'm like, yes, you did lose, but did you learn anything out of it today? Mm. Did you learn anything that's going to help you with your next experience, the next tournament, the next competition, the next belt advancement? Because yeah. everything, even when you do something well, it's a learning opportunity. When you do something wrong, it's a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, General Che has that expression, um, pain is the best instructor, but nobody wants to attend this class. Uh, it's true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 That goes for emotional pain as well. I mean, yeah. everyone loses at some point, and then mm -hmm. it depends. Are you going to give up and never try again, or are you just going to yeah. use this experience to go back, self-analyze, and try yeah. again? Yeah, use it as a stepping stone, like something that's going to bring you like further and that's going to teach you something. Yeah. I so agree with that because, again, it's a matter of – it's a choice to see it like this or not. And, like, mm -hmm. yes, you feel the pain. You feel like, yeah, I didn't get what I want. But actually what you got from this will get you what you want. So exactly. it's like there's a gift. There's like something behind like the situation, what just happened that can actually help you so, exactly. so much when you decide to see it this way. And again, it depends on you. That's your own choice. That's your own power to be able to take what is there in front of you and get the best out of it. Like use yeah. that to propose you to get better and just to get what you actually want so if that's the thing also most of the time we have these we feel this pain we don't feel good about it because we believe we should get it already like the patient yeah. like not being patient with time like feeling that we should be at this point already or have this result already that's usually what messes up <laughs> the most it's that immediate that's, gratification yeah exactly instant and and the, I, I believe the best way for that, that just came up to mind right now because we are looking for that instant gratification. We can create it instead of waiting for it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When we celebrate, when we're grateful, when we're like, you know, like what exactly. did I do this experience? You can feel gratified from it right away and keep yeah. going. So we're seeing it as a block, I'm seeing it as something that is stopping you from moving on. Exactly. So it's it's really like that Rolling Stones song. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you'll get what you need. 
Oh, so at the end, yeah, 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 yeah. Mick Jagger, <laughs> got to give him all the credit. I yeah, yeah, show that, but I can. <laughs> I love it. Ah, well, I just want to say because it's amazing. We've already been been on for like fifteen minutes. Wow, That's crazy! I know, I know. That's crazy. Know You're easy to talk to. to. So amazing. Oh, I'm looking at that. And I want to just uh, add a little something because I know we've worked to with, uh, together in the past and you've also been in the substance program and the better version. Mm -hmm. And I just want to wrap that up because we've talked about mental preparation, we've talked about mindset and so many subjects. Thank you for yeah. the people who interact with us and the question that you guys asked. That was really, really good. Thank you for that. And to end this talk, I would love to know a bit more about how do you think in general mental preparation can help right now athletes in their uh, preparation, their performance, and also in their day-to-day, -day, not just as athletes, but as people, how yeah. do you think that can help? Well, I started working with you probably like October of 2019. I think that's the last yeah. time we, like at, the first time we actually started discussing this. That, and yeah. so from that point forward, I would say not only has it helped my competitive career because I'm more doing more self-analyzation rather than just, I have to work harder you know, if I'm not, if I take a day off, my competition's not, so I have to work harder than them, which made my yeah. training not mm -hmm. fun anymore. And so by having to be more aware of my own emotional intelligence, like you said, it made mm -hmm. me have to communicate with myself even better as well. Mm -hmm. And so then I found that my communication and my emotional intelligence not only helped with my competitive career and my training, but helped with my, you know, communication with my family, with my friends. Mm -hmm. And so, yes. you know what I mean? We're able to you know, excuse my language, we're able to cut away from the bullshit and yeah, get yeah. right to, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. of the yeah. point of what's of not only just, oh, I'm upset and I don't know why, like, you know, not being able to communicate that. It's no, let's talk about what's upsetting us. Yeah, let's talk exactly. about what you said, what I said, and let's go over this together so we can try and mm -hmm. reframe and piece together what happened so yeah. we can try and solve it for, you know, this not happening again. So the yes. same internal struggles that I, you know, have during training, can also mm -hmm. be, you know, the same interpersonal communication issues you have with someone else. And mm -hmm. so the more, you know, that you're working with Max, the more emotional intelligence you'll be able to gain within mm -hmm. yourself to not only help your communication within yourself to help yourself, but to help your communication with others. And if you can communicate mm -hmm. with others better, everybody's happier, which means in turn, you are happier. That is, thank you for sharing that. It is so <laughs> powerful. I love the fact that it's like you got clear with what was going on there and put it into work Definitely. and not use it in, like with relationship, like people around you that they can now benefit from that too. Exactly. Like you being clear with yourself, else you being clear with other people about what you want, what you need and what you're doing. And even for exactly. yourself not having to overjudge you or like I yeah, have to do even more, but now you're smarter about your choices and yeah. what you need. I love that. Thank and that's so what it is. Much. I mean, thanks to your coaching, because I was always just – you know, I'm always beating myself up like, oh, that that jump wasn't perfect or I didn't nail that kick. Mm -hmm. And so I was walking around just so frustrated and like uptight <laughs> all of the time because, mm -hmm. I mean, you could feel it on my body. Like I wasn't having fun. I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And I had to, you know, it was thanks to some of our sessions where you would ask me, you know, some tough questions that like, man, I didn't want to think <laughs> about that. Or like, no, I haven't thought about that before. And so it's nice to have someone with your amount of training that mm -hmm. I can, you know, it's all about, you know, ben it's all beneficial at the end of the day. And so it's yeah. nice to hear it from someone else that, you know, oh, okay, it's, I don't have to beat myself up to beat myself. Do you know what I mean? If you're always trying to be better than the day that you were yes. yesterday, then yeah. I think you really helped me with the mindset of you don't have to beat yourself up to be better. Mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the day, that was what was really helped me yes. the most with the whole self-champ program. Mm -hmm. I will remember that saying because this is something that have. I would say close to my heart to believe that. This is really a, nice. a, a big belief that I have to not having to beat yourself or in order to be better. Be better. <laughs> exactly. Like, be the best. Yes. Exactly. It's not a necessity like to endure that much pain because you can do better and be smart about the way you do things. Exactly. By just like having a better relationship with yourself. That's exactly. it. No, no need to be like feeling bad about you or like just being like you're not enough, that kind of stuff. Just the fact that you can now have a better conversation, know exactly what you exactly. want and be in charge of yourself, lead yourself, makes such a difference. I'm so happy to hear that, totally. Absolutely. Um, Thank you for putting it out there. Thank you for getting it ready. Thank you for organizing all of that.
Thank you so much for taking your time for being here and having this amazing conversation that was so enlightening and oh, so anytime. much insights. Yeah, I love it. We have so much <laughs> great end conversation. I know we always do these. All, these sessions always go so fast. I know, I know. Well, I want to say uh, again, thank you so much for everybody who's here tonight. If you have any questions for me, for Ariela, obviously you can message us. We're super open to answer your questions. Always nice to share with other people and like have these great conversations about any topic we mentioned today so we're truly open for that and yes to maybe another time for other subject if you guys awesome. enjoyed this conversation today maybe let us know if you want us to talk about other topics uh, i'm pretty sure we'll be really open to it and we'll look into that all right all right well, thank you max thank you Arilla. have a good day goodbye have everybody a good night. stay safe bye guys thank you too bye bye